Hello again. Well, I'm back with my stepper-driven record player. It's been a few weeks. Uh, you may have seen the last video I did on this where I was playing around with the belt drive, um, having not been that successful with the direct drive and uh, gear wheel driven one um, previously. So um, it's been a frustrating few weeks actually. I fiddled and faffed and uh, tried various things. So you may remember I've got a 3D printed pulley at the back here. Um, this was the first one I started with. I tried this design, this design um, is the one that's on at the minute but this one has been cleaned up in the lathe, um, not particularly successfully um, and uh, I've also uh, had some uh, trials and tribulations with the Arduino so this is the one I was using, this developed a Duff's uh, USB port. Um, and uh, I've also um, tried to address the problem I had in the last video which was the belt kept slipping off this big aluminium pulley here by putting on a bit of cardboard so this sort of thing here this is this is one that I did uh, to begin with but it wasn't quite wide enough so uh, I've made another one and uh, just generally um, been experimenting so um, let's uh, let's put a record on now the software has been extensively rewritten as well. Um, previously I could just change speeds really easily. Um, what I've done now is made it so that when the Arduino boots, the uh, you get the speed selection option and then when you push the stop button, so the stop button on the uh, little controller down here, uh, that basically just resets the Arduino. So changing speeds is a rather slower process than it used to be. Anyway, uh, I've got the speed set up for... Um, for the uh, the belt dr the belt drive I've got here because I've I've got a different belt to try as well and that needs slightly different speeds. Um, so I'm still working on the original Hoover vacuum cleaner belt here, and uh, let's try. This is a 78, so let's put it to 78. And it does struggle a bit to get going. Let's just try adjusting the tension on that a little bit. That's better. That's actually running a bit fast at the minute. But you can hear there's quite a lot of wow and flutter in there. So if we stop that. I'm going to put on um, a 45. Again, that's running a bit fast. I've obviously not got the uh, belt tension quite right. Um, but again, quite a lot of wow and flutter in there. So let's stop it and put a 33 on. Well, I think you can just about tell there's music on there, but that's about it, really. So, essentially, although um, it's stable to the extent that um, the belt doesn't slip off and whatever, um, it basically doesn't work um, half as well as I, I would really like it to. 
So um, what I can do uh, is change the belt. So I'm pretty sure uh, Grandad is an old man and possibly some other people suggested um, that I use a rubber band. Um, so let's try one. Uh, this one just about fits. So um, Now the cardboard isn't needed for the rubber band but I'll leave it on for a minute. So I'm just um, pulling a wire on the Arduino board um, which tells it to come back up um, with different speeds. So let's try this. This should be 78 with the rubber band on. And that's showing 80, which is still a little fast. One of the slight frustrations of this setup is that I find every time I fiddle and change anything, I end up having to reprogram the speeds um, because they all change slightly. But um, that should be close enough. Let's see what that sounds like. Well, let's try the other side because I think that's the side I was using before. That's not too bad. In fact, I like that track because um, it's got some decent notes in it which um, show the amount of um, wow and flutter quite well. Okay, let's try uh, something a bit slower than that. Let's try the 45. Well, it's not great, but it is recognisable. Now for the 33. To let the uh, Arduino reset before I can select a new speed. Well, you wouldn't want to listen to it, but um, it is sort of recognisable. I mean, that's a cover of Rose Garden, um, if, if you didn't uh, recognise it from the, the playback. So, what's to do? Um, clearly, I could go and adjust the speeds a bit more. Um, when I had this running yesterday, the speeds were fine. Obviously, there's some slight variation probably to do with the tension here, um, which has caused the speeds to go off slightly. Um, but realistically, uh, it's not the speeds that really are the problem. I've been able to get this uh, this contraption to uh, sit pretty uh, well on any speed I really want it to. Um, it's the uh, the consistency of the speed. The stepper motor, when it's driving the 78, um, is is okay. When it's driving uh, 
uh, slower speed records is less okay and even with gearing I mean there's there's about a 1 to 3.9 ratio between this gear and this gear here so the speed of the stepper motor is, when it's playing a 33 record is actually higher than it was when I was playing a 78 record back with the direct drive version and yet the direct drive version 78 sounded fine and the um, the belt driven 33 does not sound fine so there's clearly something else going on there I also wonder if I've managed to blow the uh, stepper motor or at least damage it a bit if I take the belt off and just run it you can hear there's a bit of rhythmic thumping um, and uh, it's possible that I've over vaulted or um, over current the motor um, I do have a cooling fan. I mean, it did on occasions get very hot. Recently, it hasn't got hot at all. So, um, something I need to do is uh, check the coils and make sure I've not uh, killed it. Well, I've done a few more tests. I've checked out the coils on the stepper motor and they all seem to be intact. Um, so, I haven't blown it, even though I know I have been overvolting it. I've also changed out the Darlington transistor chip. Now, this is the one I was using. And um, what is it? It's a uh, ULN two double o three AN. So um, something very standard. Now that came out of the same electric typewriter that the stepper motor came out of, and so did this stepper motor here. This is a littler one. It looks identical, but uh, the one I have been using is still in place over there. This one is actually slightly smaller, so it's not a direct replacement. I can't just stick the um, the pulley on it doesn't fit um, but I could 3d print a new one now if I actually uh, turn on this you can hear and maybe even see that there is a slight rhythmic thumping to it now that suggests to me that uh, either these motors are just poor quality or actually there's something wrong on my Arduino board here. Either I've got it wired incorrectly or the uh, Arduino stepper library is just not up to scratch or not uh, configured correctly. Anyway, leave some avenues for exploration. I do have other stepper motors stolen out of printers and the like and um, I could buy some more expensive uh, stepper controllers uh, and there's also obviously a lot of mechanical things I can do here. So to be honest, I'm not quite sure where this is going next, but uh, I do want to build a working record player turntable. I have uses for one. Um, this was going to be uh, a project on the way to other projects and it's just turned into a, a big endeavor all of its own. So uh, there we go. Um... Clearly lots of areas that can still be improved. Um, I'm not happy about the, the sort of tone arm sound system. Um, I'm, it's, it's simple and, and crude and I'm sure I can get better sound out of it than I'm getting out of it. But I don't think that's really the problem. I think the problem is still the speed. Although I may do some tests with um, this turntable as it stands and uh, a different tone arm system. Now I'm going to post the uh, the source code for the Arduino down below. Uh, I forgot to mention why I've changed the um, the way the code works so that uh, the reset is needed to change speed. This is so that when the Arduino is actually uh, running the stepper motor, it's not being interrupted for any reason whatsoever. So it's not scanning keys or or anything. It can actually just drive the stepper motor, which I had hoped would increase the uh, smoothness of the running, but it doesn't really seem to have made much difference. I'll also post below the OpenSCAD file for the two 3D printed parts I've used in this build. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and if you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Mr. RG Stuff.